I, I was speaking right here in Phoenix at Arizona West Assembly of God in front of 200 people. Mm -hmm. And this theologian jumped up, and, and I'm right in the middle of sharing this about the blood on the mercy seat. And he says, young man, he says, you're out of order. He says, I've been, a, I've been the, the top theologian of ancient biblical history and all for 30 years in the top theological seminary of America. He says, you don't know what you're talking about. That Ark of the Covenant couldn't be there. And I said, sir, I said, uh, so you, you're, you're a professor and you've, you've taught a lot of students? He says, well, certainly, 30 years worth. I says, answer me a question. If one of your students did to you what you just did to me in front of all these people mm -hmm. in a classroom when you're lecturing, would you have appreciated it? Everybody was laughing. <laughs> the Lord gave me wisdom how to ask that. <laughs> he looks around at everybody in the church laughing. He says, well, I guess it is a bit disrespectful, isn't it? <laughs> and I said, yes, it is. Mm -hmm. I said, would you do me a favor? Would you sit down and let me finish all that I have to say? And then I'll answer any question you have. He sat down. He was quiet. He met me at the door before he left. He says, he shook my hand. He says, I would give you an A on your dissertation tonight. <laughs> you, you really hit me hard. Uh, I'm not going to say you're right yet. Uh -huh. I'm going home and I'm going in to study. Uh -huh. I'm going to prove this thing out biblically one way or the other. Uh -huh. I went back one year later there at Arizona Assembly of God to speak. He was the first man to meet me at the door. Hand out, 85 years old. He says, Mr. Groover, I cannot refute your presentation. It is biblically sound. I've never looked at the Hebrew and the Greek in the understanding that you gave. I only regret that I'm not still teaching students. I would straighten their minds out. I have corrupted their minds, and I've repented for that. Wow. Oh, he passed away <sighs> that year. Wow. <laughs> he had the truth, though. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. About the uh, full business gospel. Poor gospel business. Full gospel, Full gospel business, business, man. business man. That meeting. So, um, oh. um, who, who, was there a videotape? Did they, did they videotape it? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I, okay. I've asked uh, uh, international directors, would you check headquarters and see if they videotaped yeah. it? Or what? Because people were just in awe. I mean, after that was done that night, people just sit there. They, they weren't even talking. Normally, it's loud talk. They're just sitting there. And uh, <laughs> Demas got up and he said, uh, What did he say? Do you know what you've heard tonight, people? He says, uh, uh, We're just going to dismiss in prayer, but I think you need to sit and see la. You need to pause and calmly think about what's been presented this today. Uh, do you realize this? He says, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to visit. I just want to sit down and think. And he did. He, he prayed a dismissal prayer and just sit down. He was in awe. And How many people were there in the conference? Oh, there was probably over 2,000. Oh, yeah. It was wow. the Southwest Regional Convention of the United States. Huh. It was the biggest ballroom they had at Ramada Inn on East McDowell at that time. You have the address of that hotel? It's got to be, I don't know if it's still Ramada or not, but it has to be very close to a restaurant I used to go to all the time called Bill Johnson's Big Apple. Now, I hear that's not there anymore. This was in 1991, uh, probably 91, because 90, what was it, uh, March, we went to... Uh, the University of Nebraska. That was March mm -hmm. of 90. Mm -hmm. So 91, mm -hmm. uh, it would be probably February of 91 or 92. The Full Gospel Businessmen's Regional, uh, uh, Southwest Regional Convention. Uh, 
the man okay. who was the the president of the state of Arizona uh, of full gospel businessmen of that time was Carl. Oh dear, Carl had it a minute ago. It'll come back. Uh, Carl Williams, I believe. Oh, Carl Williams. Williams. What's his title? And uh, he's the president of the. He was president of Full Gospel Businessmen Arizona, the Arizona chapter, state chapter, and he presided over it. Uh, he's he was up in years then, gray headed. So he's probably with the Lord now too, but uh, oh. It, it was powerful. It was powerful. And uh, so, how long did he talk? Uh, Ron gave the speech. How long did what? Ron Ron White gave that speech. Oh man, uh, you know he he didn't speak an awfully long time. Then he mm. showed his video. Oh okay. And it just people just blown away. And uh, a man come walking up to me and said, could I talk to you for a moment alone? And I said, sure. Now it was quiet in there. And uh, some people came up and were wanting to see Ron's documentation and all and things and pictures. He had a lot of pictures and they wanted to see those certificates. So there were a lot of people saw those certificates in that folder that night too. Oh. There were a lot of people because he was showing them to him and the pictures. Oh. And he had a, another folder of pictures from oh. the site and all that. Oh. And uh, this man asked me, and so I got up with him, and we went over to another table way back off on the side with two other men sitting there. And he said, sit down. And uh, so these three men, this man said, uh, listen, uh, Henry, uh, that man is possessed of a lying demon. <laughs> and... The three of us have agreed, we'll cast that devil out of him if you will agree. We don't want to humiliate you. We, we know you're a man of God. We know of you. But he is full of lies. And we're going to cast that devil out if you will agree to it. Otherwise, we'll catch him later. I said to him, I said, sir, I don't know who you are, but I want to tell you something. If the man is full of lying demons and he's that good at it. Now, I hadn't proven all these kind of things that we're talking about yet. I was new with him. See, I was just getting in the criticisms and being bashed and humbled again and again in the word. So I wasn't prepared for a big conflict. But I was convinced Ron was of God. Mm -hmm. But if there's a chance he isn't, mm -hmm. I said... I don't think anybody in this room wants to listen to a man full of lying demons. Mm -hmm. So I said, I give you permission mm -hmm. because I don't want to follow him if he's full of lying demons. I'm not above being deceived. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I said, I want to tell you three men, I believe he's a man of God. Mm -hmm. I've traveled with him a little bit now and I've been with him a fair amount. And I believe he's a true Christian and a very humble man. Mm -hmm. But if he's full of lying demons, personally in the assemblies, we don't we didn't believe that a Christian could be full of demons. Mm. And I believe he's a Christian. Mm. But go to it. Mm. So he walked over there, the two men behind him. And Ron is showing people his certificates and all. And he comes walking up like just at Ron's left hand and says to him, you know what I think? Just like that. You know what I think? And Ron leans like this and looks up at him. And he says, well, friend, he says, uh, I certainly would appreciate you telling it to my face. I wouldn't want you saying anything. Uh, oh, he says, he says, well, I'd appreciate you telling me what you think. He says, but I don't think you need to shout. Mm. And the man says, I believe you are full of lying demons and we've come to cast them out. Mm. Right in front of everybody, loud as everybody could hear it in that auditorium. People are sitting quiet. And here's a man telling he's full of lying demons. Ron smiles and says, well, well, friend, I certainly wouldn't want you running around telling that behind my back because I don't want any lying demons. So I give you full permission. Go ahead, cast them out. I believe in deliverance. <laughs> and the man says, he goes like this, I don't believe you. And Ron says, well, friend, should we both get to heaven, you're going to be a mighty nice man to meet. And the man says, 
you're not worth it. And the three of them turned and walked away. And I thought, who got delivered of lying demons? <laughs> <laughs> the next day he met me out in the lobby, this man. And he says, well, he's still, we believe he's full of lying demons. I said, I don't want to hear another word of it. Mm. I said, the manifestation that came from you and these two men that were with you agree with the, the show you put on? It was supposed to be tell and show. You didn't show anything but anger. I said, sir, I want you to know something. I judged what you did last night out of James chapter 3. And you hit every mark of the wisdom that's from below, full of envy, strife, confusion, and every work. It's earthly, devilish, sensual, and devilish. I said, the wisdom from above, if you truly believed in what you did, could have been, first of all, pure, peaceable, gentle, easily approached without partiality, and definitely without hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't want to talk to you anymore about it. You showed me your true colors. You need to repent. Mm -hmm. And I walked away. Oh, he was mad. Wow. I'll, I'll prove him wrong. I, says, I would be cautious of that. And then you asked, I remember you said, you asked Ron, how could he handle this mm -hmm. kind of situation so mildly? And you said, he, t yes. he said, Oh, you know that. You know that. Testimony. I remember. I remember what you told me. He said, Henry... He said, there's something I have learned in archaeology in my testimony. Your worst critics are your best friends in the sense that they spread the news and they separate the ones that love the truth versus the ones that will listen to gossip. The ones that want the truth will search it out. The ones that want to believe a lie will listen to hearsay, to gossip. They're your friends. That's wow. why you called him friend. Wow, such a wisdom. I love what Abraham Lincoln, he coined that famous expression. They ask him, how can you treat your enemies so kindly? Mm. You know, our president, Abraham Lincoln? He said, why? He said, the ah. best way to take care of an enemy is make him your friend because he's no longer your enemy. <laughs> And I, I read that one day after I'd met Ron Wyatt. And I says, Ron, you follow Abraham Lincoln's expression to a T. I saw him do that with so many critics. It was unbelievable. We were up in, up in Fairbanks, Alaska, foot of snow on the ground. And J.J. Uh, Middleton was the president of the chapter up there, full gospel businessmen again. And uh, J.J. and I are talking, and Ron White, we're talking before he's to get up and give his presentation. And a Catholic priest that I had led to the Lord the night before, prayed over him, got him delivered, got him filled with the Holy Ghost, was there that night in civilian clothes, and he come walking up, and uh, he's, he says to, to Ron Wyatt, he says, uh, Mr. Wyatt, it's nice to meet you. I've seen you on Henry's video. He says... I'm Father so-and-so. And Ron says, well, he says, it's nice to meet you, sir. He says, I personally don't call anybody Father but my Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, but he says, I respect you. You're a minister then, mm -hmm. correct? He says, yes, I'm a Catholic priest. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, I wouldn't know it. He says, well, I dress in civilian clothes. Well, that conversation went on. He says, but I want you to know something. There's a man out, out the door that has 54 pages of criticisms against you. And he's selling them for $5. He's calling you a total fraud. And he says he's a doctorate also of theology and archaeology. Mm, mm, mm. And he's telling everybody that comes in, you're a total fraud. Mm. And Ron looks at this Catholic priest and says to him, is that right? And he says, yeah. He says, well, go on in and get yourself a chair. I says, listen, I've got a chair there. Uh, sit down right beside mine. You'll see my little briefcase sitting there. There's a chair saved for you. You said you were coming tonight. It's at my right hand. You can have it right. He said, well, thank you, Henry. So he was right up front with me. And uh, the Catholic priest was right beside uh -huh. me. And, uh, and uh, J.J. heads out and says, well, and Ron says, how long have we got before the meeting starts? Uh -huh. And J.J. says, well, we got about 12, 15 minutes before uh -huh. we introduce you. 
Ron says, okay, I'll be right back. Uh -huh. And I see Ron looking around. I see an exit door. The entrance door is over here. Uh -huh. I see one down at the end of a hall. I know where he's going. I said, can I stick with you? He says, sure. Where are you going? He says, you'll find out. He goes out the exit door. We walk in a foot of snow all around to the front door. Uh -huh. And this man says, I have 54 pages here proving Mr. Wyatt is a total fraud. Are you people going to hear him? And Ron says, well, I heard, certainly hope so. Mm. And he didn't know Ron or me. The guy didn't. That's how Gee. thorough investigation oh. he made. Oh. And uh, Ron Wyatt says, well, well, how much are you asking? $5? Ron takes $5 out and says, sure, I'd like to have them. And he gives him the $5 and he gives him the 54 pages. And Ron holds it in one hand, puts his other hand and says, by the way, I'm Ron Wyatt. Listen, uh, I'll be up in just a few minutes speaking. I'm going to show a video. Obviously, you don't know me. Mm -hmm. But he says, I want to invite you to come and sit right up front with this man right here. Mm -hmm. So he seats him right at my left hand. <laughs> and they introduce him and up he goes up front. And uh, Ron gets up there, he's introduced, he says, now he says, listen, and he asked JJ before, he says, I want to do something, would you allow me to give this time, man a, an opportunity to vent his, his criticisms? Wow. And JJ said, well, we, we came here to hear you. And Ron said, I know, but you see, he has contaminated people, and it needs to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. They don't need to leave here with that. So I want to I wanna let him come up and ask me any question he wants. And I'll answer it in front of the people. Because mm. I don't know what's in the 54 pages yet. Mm. And so J.J. agreed. He says, I don't want to do it, but I'll agree to it. So Ron gets up there and says, well, there's a gentleman here. All of you have probably seen him as he come in the door. He mm -hmm. has 54 pages. Some of you I see have those pages. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to give him full opportunity to come up here beside me at the microphone and ask any question he wants. Uh -huh. So he came up there and he started speaking his criticisms and Ron began answering them. And every time he'd say, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a bold faced lie. Uh -huh. And he went on and on and on trying to tell his side of it, his 54 pages. And he went on for an hour. This went on for an hour. The Catholic priest at my right hand, <laughs> Father Pat Ryan is his name. He stands up and he says, sir, he says, I came here to hear Ron Wyatt tonight. Now he says, I also have two doctorates. I think I'm a little bit intelligent. You may not like me because I'm a Catholic priest and you're a Baptist minister. I know you have a doctorate, two doctorates, but he says, I have two. But he said, I'm, I'd like to make a suggestion. I cannot believe how polite Mr. Wyatt mm. has been standing there beside you, mm. smiling. Mm. It shows me which one's really telling the truth. And I think the audience has seen who's really telling the truth. You can see You've the cut food. Mr. Wyatt off again and again and not let him finish answering. You're not here for the truth. You're here for your own agenda. Now, may I make a suggestion that you sit down before you make more of a fool of yourself? And the people jumped up <laughs> clapping, gave him a standing ovation. <laughs> and the guy says, oh. And, D and big old J.J. Middleton, the, the president, <laughs> Stands up, takes his arm and says, because he wasn't going to sit down. He says, now listen, I'm going to give you an opportunity. Because he wasn't going to leave that microphone. He took his arm. He wouldn't go with him. Mm. He said, I'm going to give you an opportunity to go down here and sit beside Henry mm. and be quiet mm. and listen to his presentation or leave the building. Mm. Oh, I'll sit down. So he sit beside me. He never, he sit there with his pen just doodling on the back of one of his 54 pages. Just doodling, just scribbling. Never looked up at Ron mm. once, just shaking his head no and just doodling. Mm. And when Ron showed his video, he never once looked up at it. Mm. And uh, then he got up and walked out. Mm. I thought, dear Lord, but that's wrong. Uh, he was such a gracious man. I, when... Now, what the critics said of me, I met Ron 
hungry, starving, and begging for food and money. Remember? That's what he said. That was in those 54 pages. He had talked to Richard Reeves. Huh. That was part of it. And that was what Richard Reeves said, the president of Wyatt Archaeological mm. Research. Mm. That's sad. I forgive him for it, but it's done a lot of damage. It's mm -hmm. like taking that feather tick to the wind. Those feathers are all over the world. But anyhow, uh, after that, uh, Ron Wyatt, uh, after I met him, he took me to the airport in Tel Aviv, three mm -hmm. o'clock in the morning, that morning he took me. He put me in the line up front and he said, don't leave this place, you leave, you'll be way back in the back, you might miss your flight. Mm -hmm. Now I can only leave if you, I know you're taken care of to get out of Israel. Mm -hmm. Now stay here, Henry, I know this airport, I'm in and out of it all the time. You step, don't step over here, over here, they'll step right in your way and they won't let you back in. Stay where I'm putting you. <laughs> I said, okay. I had taken several hundred dollars and put them in an envelope and set it over when I got out of the car. He didn't see me. He come around the trunk to get my, he, when he lifted the trunk to get my backpack out, I put it on the seat and got out. He went to his car. He saw the envelope. Mm -hmm. He run back in and stuffed something in my back pocket and said, this is a little information how to get a hold of me. He had written his home phone number on it. Mm -hmm. That was a little information. Mm -hmm. Inside that envelope was several hundred dollars. He gave me back every penny I left for him. Don't tell me he's a fraud and that he's in it for money. That was my introduction to Ron Wyatt. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Thank you so much.